roughly twice the height of any dam ever built up to that point, requiring more concrete than had gone into all the concrete dams the US government had built up to that time, located in one of the most remote and inhospitable places on Earth, the dam was literally invented as it rose from the bedrock. New equipment had to be invented in the canyon. New construction techniques had to be developed. New ways of excavating tunnels through solid rock and new ways of draining water from the riverbed so men could work in safety and dryly. New formulations of concrete had to be devised because mass concrete had never been subjected to the stresses and strains that this dam would undergo. And a new technique of cooling the concrete, which emits heat as it cures, had to be developed because otherwise that dam would still be cooling today and for another 100 years from now a process that would create cracks all throughout the structure and, and weaken it and eventually possibly destroy it. And I write about all that in my book, so I don't want to go into too much detail. Now, to learn all this new chemistry, the government established the first national laboratories in our history. And to test the design, the government built an entire dam in a California river valley, built it to destroy it, to see how the real thing would respond under the pressure of a trillion gallons of water in the reservoir that would be named Lake Mead. The government awarded the construction contract to a consortium of builders who became nationally famous tycoons by building this dam. Among them, heretofore little known men named Henry Kaiser and Warren Bechtel. The builders constructed their own hospital in Boulder City, which was the work camp that was built by the government for the workers and their families. They constructed their own hospital and they charged the workers a few dollars a month for medical care, a system that many years later became familiar to us all as Kaiser Permanente. Now this chapter of the dam's history brings us to September 30th, 1935, 75 years ago, when Franklin Roosevelt personally came out to the canyon, propped himself up on a makeshift lectern under 120 degree heat at a point that's now occupied by a big copper-colored visitor center that many of you may have seen. And before 10,000 spectators and 20 million listeners on a nationwide radio hookup, he dedicated the dam, conceived, approved, and launched by his Republican predecessors. He dedicated it in the name of the New Deal. <laughs> well, he was a politician. 